Hey, what's up everyone? This is Greg. Welcome back to our beginning core data video tutorial series. In this video, we'll dive right into core data and take a whirlwind tour of the basics. Modeling your data, adding objects, and fetching data. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video. We won't be looking at very much user interface yet, but we'll have some nice console output to prove that we have data coming in and out. Modeling your data objects is just like setting up a database table schema or adding properties to a Swift class or struct. Using the core data model editor, you set up entities. These are like database tables or a class definition. Then each entity can have any number of attributes. Attributes are like fields in your table or properties in your class. Attributes are also typed, which means aside from giving them a name, you also assign a type such as string or date or double. You'll learn more about the parts that make up a working core data system over the next few videos, but I wanted to bring up a couple of parts right away, the managed object and the managed object context. A managed object is a NS managed object class or subclass and represents a single data record based on your model. They're the core data equivalent of a plain old class or struct with a bunch of properties on them. The managed object context is like a workspace that contains many managed objects. The managed object context is where you'll add new objects to the graph and is also the thing that you'll call save on to persist the data to disk. As you'll see in the demo, adding and fetching records is pretty simple once you have your data models set up. To add data, you first need to access the entity description, which comes from your data model. Then you create instances of NS managed object based on that entity and start filling in your data. To fetch data, you need to create an instance of NS fetch request saying what kind of entity you want to fetch, and then you execute it. There are many options for searching and sorting that you can apply to a fetch request, and you'll see some of those in later videos. Let's start out with a fresh project to see how Xcode sets up the core data stack for us. In the next video, I'll have a starter project that's also built on the standard Xcode core data template, but with some of the user interface built. But for now, let's just start right from a fresh project. I'm going to go ahead and select iOS application, single view application. And we're going to build an app to keep track of all of our devices, iPads, iPhones, watches, and so on. And just make sure the language is set to Swift, devices, universal is OK, and make sure that this use core data is checked. I'll go ahead and hit Next and save the project. Here's our new project. And let's start out with the data model. You can see I have this mydevices.xc data model D. And if I open that, then we've got our model editor here. And we're going to need one entity to track a device. And then the device will have a bunch of attributes. For now, we'll just keep track of a device name and what kind of device it is. That'll be the watch, iPad, phone, Mac, and so on. So down here, the button here says Add Entity. If yours says something different, just click and hold. And then you'll see you have a bunch of options here. So I'm going to go with Add Entity. Here's our new entity. I'm just going to give it a name. And then over here in the attributes, I'm going to add two, one for name and one for device type. And we'll set them both to be strings. And also here in the attributes inspector, you'll see there's this checkbox on whether it's optional or not. And now later on, you'll see how this turns into a optional string versus a regular string in Swift. I'm going to uncheck that because I want every device to have a device type and a name. And that's it for the data model. We're all set. Again, we're not going to have any user interface here except for outputting to the console. So I'm just going to open up the app delegate, and that's where we'll write our code. And you'll see here in the jump bar that there's the section for core data stack. And we have these properties here, managed object context, persistent store coordinator, managed object model, and so on. And so the Xcode template has these properties built in. And there is some code for these, which we don't have to concern ourselves with right now. We'll look at that a little bit more in a later video and the intermediate series. For now, you can just see we have a managed object context here, which is perfect. I'm going to start out with a helper function that's going to add some test data for us. 
And remember to add data, we first need a reference to the entity. That's that device entity that we just created. And that's in the form of an NS entity description class instance. I'm using the class method entity for name. And you can see I'm passing in the name of the entity just as a string, that's device. And then you also have to say which manage object context that is. And again, this is the property that we already have on the app delegate. I'm using the new guard syntax. And so that means if something goes wrong, then it's going to fall into this case here. And I'm just going to call fatal error, which will just trap and stop the application from running with an error message. Since the entity does exist, then at this point, we will have this constant set to the entity. And so the next step is just to create an instance of NS managed object and then set the properties on there. Since this is test data, what I'm going to do is just loop. So we'll just cre create 25 records of, with just some test data in there. The first thing I'm doing inside each iteration of the loop is I'm going to create an NS managed object instance here. You can see the constructor takes an entity and then again the constructor name is insert into managed object context. That means in addition to creating the managed object it's going to insert it into that context which again is like the workspace of all of our objects. Now that we have the device I'm just going to use set value for key and set the name property and the device type. And you can see the device type is just going to create watches and phones, mostly phones, but then every third record will say it's a watch. And that's actually all we need to do. We've instantiated these devices, inserted them into the context, we set the value, and that's it. All we need to do now here is in the did finish launching with options, make sure we call that method. And that's it. That'll insert the data. I'm not going to call save because this is just test data. So the data won't actually persist if we just stop the app. And now that we have test data, let's try a fetch. Remember, the steps for a fetch are to instantiate an NS fetch request, and then you just execute it on the context. Let's go ahead and do that. I've started out by creating an NS fetch request object. You can see that the constructor takes the entity name, passing in again his usual device. And now when I run the fetch request, this will potentially throw an error. So I've set up the do catch structure here. I'm just going to log out an error if there is a problem. And let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the implementation. All right, let's have a look at what's going on inside this do block. I'm calling manage object context dot execute fetch request. I'm passing in the fetch request, and I'm going to make sure that's going to return an optional array of any object. So I'm going to cast that to an array of NS manage object because that's what I'm expecting to come back. If that does come back, then I'm just going to loop. I've got this for loop to get each manage object that comes back. And then I'm going to call, remember when we were adding the data, we used set value for key. And now that I'm getting the data out, I'm just going to call value for key. I'm going to pull out the device type, which I want to be a string. And I'm going to pull out the name, which should also be a string. If those two values match, because I need to cast them to what I think they're going to be, then I'm just going to print them out. And that's it for the fetch. Let's go ahead and build and run. The app will launch, but I'm just going to pay attention down here to the console output. And you can see the order is not quite right, because when you retrieve the records, we haven't set a sort order or anything like that. So it's just coming back in whatever order it wants to. But you can see we've got our phones and we've got our watches, and that means we've successfully added the data and then fetched it. 
In the challenge coming up, you'll do something similar. Add a data model, add some test data, and then fetch the data. And then again, in the next video, we'll have a little bit of user interface to work with, but with the same data model. That's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we like to leave you with a challenge. You've seen how to set up an entity to keep track of devices. However, the app will eventually link people with devices to say who owns or uses which device. Your challenge is to set up a person entity and load up some test data, just as you saw in the demo. You'll find all the details in the challenge document, along with a complete walkthrough in case you need some help along the way. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.